What's up guys, Dark Dally here, and today I'm doing my tutorial for the PS4 mod SWAPA. SWAPA stands for Stupid Workaround Place Anywhere. Because of the PS4's mod limitations, yeah, a workaround for the Place Anywhere mod, you know, had to be made. And it has a lot of tools involved, all these tools in this menu right here, in the special menu, which allows you to do this. And once you learn how to use all these tools, you can place any object anywhere. For instance, you know, you can put this wall inside of that wall, you know, or any combination of absolutely anything. So, let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to say is that the mod author is, you know, always working on this mod, and there are updates which should be coming soon, which should fix some of the complexities with these tools. Some of these tools are difficult to use, particularly these tilter tools, which I'll get to. So there should be updates coming soon, and then when those updates come, I will you know, either update this tutorial or make a new one and provide a link. Now, that said, the author himself did make a really comprehensive guide to his mod already, and I will put a link to that in my description. I'm making a tutorial because some people wanted it clarified, you know, so I'm going to see if I can take a shot at this and explain how this mod works in a really understandable way. The first thing I want to talk about is non-RGO versus RGO items, okay? RGO stands for Rug Glitchable Object. Rug Glitchable Objects are things we're all familiar with, such as beds, you know, any kind of furniture. Um, tables, this door is Rug Glitchable. Actually, I have it on a rug right now. Generally, Rug Glitchable Objects are objects which don't snap, and items you cannot Rug Glitch are items that do snap, generally. I haven't found any exceptions to the rule yet, but there may well be. So, be aware that one easy way to test if an item is rug glitchable or not is to simply put it on a floor and see if it moves with the floor. See that wall? This wall is not rug glitchable because it snaps. It snaps to a very particular piece, but it does snap. It won't be able to be rug glitched. You know, we know the bed is. Of course, you know, people rug glitch these every day. See how it moves with the floor? That's one quick way to test because this mod has separate tools that work only with rug glitchable items, tools which make swap it easier. The first tools I'm going to show you, however, work with every item. So you can use these, you know, in any item, rug glitchable or no, but I want to go ahead and separate those two things because the next set of tools I'm going to talk about after this are tools specifically for these guys, which are able to place groups of them quicker and easier. So the first tool of Swappa is this. This is the first tool that you'll see right here. It's the PA Initiator. Let's go ahead and grab us a wall. Let's grab this wall I was playing with over here. And I'll show you how this tool allows us to place this wall anywhere. Now when you place this post here, it's going to appear like that. A button will appear at the top and the little red blob appears at the bottom. It's made up of three pieces because in order to use this tool we have to move the pole around. So first I'm going to show you how these functions work. Now when we move this pole, say I want to place it here, that little red blob does not move with it, but the button does. This little thing here is a switch, it's a trigger. And when you step on it, and I will show you why you want to do this, it makes the pole disappear. Every time you walk over this, it makes the pole disappear or reappear. Okay? The button on top, well, let's get our post back. The button on top, its function is to call the switch back. So you can just grab it, right, and then drop it, and it, it, it'll bring that back. So this allows you, that once you've been using this tool and the parts get separated, to put it back together for, you know, reuse or whatever, you know. So you can just grab, drop, and the switch reappears. That tool, this is the first tool of the primary functions of Swappa. And the primary things we're going to be using, really, the tools you'll use the most, is this tool and this light. So that's what we're really going to focus on, because I want this tutorial to be a practical guide. So in all practicality, those two tools, as of right now, are pretty much 90% of the mod's functionality. You can really... Well, let's get into it. So I want to place this wall anyway. The first step is we need to group select it with this post. So let's put this post in a way that we can group select that wall. 
there's a couple things we need to note. First of all, the post needs to be lower than the wall. You know, it needs to be at like the same level or lower. If this wall is sunk into the ground, this is not going to work. There is a special PA initiator if you want to grab things that are far in the ground. So let's just, you know, leave that at that. So let's put this close enough so that we can group select the wall. You want to initiate the group select from the PA initiator. Okay, I didn't get it close enough. That's okay, that happens. Okay, I initiated the group select from the PA initiator. So now you see I'm holding the pole and the wall. Now that's where this little red blob switch comes into play. We step on it. Oops, I stepped on it twice. There we go. You can step on the switch any number of times. It'll simply toggle that pole on and off. So I stepped on it to toggle the pole off, and now notice I can place this wall anywhere, for the most part. I can't put it inside here, but I can float it in the air. Now, do you notice how it jumped around when I moved it? When you get rid of that pole, that's what happens. So while the pole is still there, while you still have your pole, this is when you want to do any kind of moving, okay? You want to get it positioned like this, so that when you hit the switch and drop the pole off, it's where you want it because once you place it, you can't reposition it and trying to move it here can make this jump around. Not always, but it can make it really jump around. So now we can place this anywhere we want. So let's just place it right there. So this part of the tool allows us to free float items. So now that we've free floated it, let me show you how the switch and the trigger work so that we can get our pull back. Say we want our pull back because we want to reuse it. It's no problem. We can just step on the switch that makes the pole reappear. Now we can just move it out of the way. Okay, so now we have this wall up here floating. That's what that can do. Let's put the wall back down. Now the second tool, which I've already showed, is this light. This little light is what allows the second part of functionality from Swappa, which will allow us to put this wall absolutely anywhere with no restraints at all. Again, this is all a workaround, and the mod author is working to update this and make this more intuitive. For right now, this is what we got to do. Let's go ahead and do the first step, which is to grab the pole and put it so that we can group select the item. If I haven't already said, you want to make sure to put the pole in the center of the wall, because once you do the group select, the wall is going to rotate around whatever the group select was initiated by. Does that make sense? So if the pole's in the center, then when you're rotating the wall, it's going to rotate, you know, roughly around the center. It simply makes it easier. So we grabbed it just like we did the first time. And then notice the light came with it, and the light's little blue switch left is left floating over there. Let's go ahead and we're just going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to hit the switch to turn off the post. So now we can free float this item. Now we hit the blue trigger. Now the first time we hit the blue trigger, it's going to make whatever the light is attached to disappear. So we want to hit it again. Let's go ahead and hit it one more time. Okay, so we hit that twice. Now, well, we can simply place this absolutely anywhere we want. Note that that light is snapped to this wall, and hitting this blue trigger makes whatever the light is snapped to disappear or reappear. So if that light goes away while it's snapped to something invisible, that item will be lost. So keep that in mind. So we can now place this, you know, over here if we want. It's good when you're using these pieces, as you notice, I put the post over here. It's good to keep them kind of out of your work area so you don't accidentally hit the triggers. Now this is placed and it is visible. We are safe to get rid of this light. Now we can grab it and we can move it elsewhere, or we can just go ahead and store it. Now the author recommends, he says, actually he strictly says, only store the light. He says, don't touch the switch. And with this, Let's go ahead and get our post back. If we are done with this and we want to put it away, he says only store this by the post and or the trigger. He says never store the button. Now, in my testing of this mod, I wanted to be thorough. So I did everything I could to try to break the mod. I deleted, I stored, you know, all his little pieces in every order and nothing bad happened. So I'm not sure why he said not to do that, but it's best just to do what he says. Only delete the post by the post of the trigger and only delete the light by the light. So now we are able to place this here using that light. Now we can do the same thing if we want to do a group items. Let's say we want to have this as part of it. So we can just kind of put this 
All right, here. Oops, there we go. I think that's close enough. Let's go ahead and get our pole back. And I'll show you what we're gonna do. Let's put our pole where we can group select these. Now, if we wanna move both of these and snap anywhere, let's make sure these are close enough to be group selected. No, they are not. Okay, I had to move some things around. Sometimes the pole won't want to, like if I put this pole right here, for some reason, I cannot get it to group select. Oh, well that time I did. Sometimes you have to move the pole around a bit. So, here where I have a group of items and I've group selected them, now I can move them both around. If I want to make them both place anywhere, I need to grab that light again and I need to put a light on each of these. Now when you're placing the light, make sure to place it, don't place it way above your head because remember you got to hit those triggers. And you don't want you don't want to have them so high you can't jump up and hit them. You need one on each of these, okay? And it's the same thing that we did when it was just one item. You want to grab the group. You want to turn off the pole. Oops, I hit it twice. There we go. Turn off the pole. Now we want to hit these east at least once. Okay, see they were both turned off. We need to hit these both again. There we go. And now we can put these both anywhere. Now remember earlier when I, you know, distinguished the difference between non-RGO and RGO items. There's a separate tool which I'll get to for the not, for the RGO items, the items that can be rug glitched, which allows you to do this without putting a lamp on every single one and hitting tons and tons of switches. That's why it's like that. So now, you know, we have both of these and we can put these anywhere that we want. Now we have this mess to clean up. No problem. Let's get our... See, our switch is way over there. So we can just call the switch back. Right? Step on that. I accidentally hit the lights. Don't worry about that. Let's go ahead. Okay, get our pull back. All these switches, you know, once you toggle them once, you can totally toggle them again. Just make sure if you're placing these and you accidentally step on this, don't move this light away and then store it because you'll lose this item because this switch turns on or off whatever item is snapped to the light. So let's make sure both of these are activated. Now we can go ahead and store these lights or move them, or scrap them, whatever. So that is how you use the basic tools. And these are the tools you're gonna use 99% of the time with Swappa. Okay, now remember earlier when I said that when you're initiating a place anywhere, when you're initiating the PA, the PA post must be lower than the object. Well, what if you have an object that's sunk in the ground and we want to place this anywhere? You know, so there is a separate tool for this. Let's go back to our miscellaneous menu. And that is what is down here at the end, near the end, that's what this is for. This is much taller than the little post. And this allows you to grab items which are already in the ground so that you can move them. <clears throat> now one thing you want to note when placing this is you don't want to place it like this. You don't want to place it in the ground because like the other post, a little red blob switch is going to appear at the bottom. We need this above ground so that we can actually see that switch. So let's move this up on the PlayStation, which, well, you are on, otherwise you would not be interested in this Mahut. On the PlayStation, you want to hold X and L1 and you can push up or down to move items up and down. So let's place it on the ground over here. There's a little blob switch. There's our button. It's just like the other post, only that it's longer. So we can grab it. We can put it here, close enough to group select with the wall. Hold X and L1, and we can move this down into the ground. Now, we can group select. Okay, here I had the wall sunken in. I sunk the pole in farther. I group selected it, and this allowed us to get an item which was sunk into the ground. That's what, you know, you use this pole for. It's long enough you can sink it into the ground, and it works exactly the same. Once we have group selected it, we simply step on the switch, and then... Yeah, as you can see, this works exactly the same as the short little stubby pole, but this is for items which are sunk in the ground. You use it exactly the same way, you know, with groups and whatever. So now let's move on to working with the rug glitchable objects. The rug glitch of old, you know, our time honored tradition is still the, honestly the best way to do a lot of things. If I just want to put a door in a doorway, it's still best just to use the rug glitch. It's quicker, it's easier, and I can reposition it infinite amount of times 
the rug's invisible, you don't see it. You know, for simple things like this, you're still going to be using that. But there's, you know, there's times when you would, you know, like say for instance you're placing something on the edge of something. Well, that rug sticks out and you're going to have collision with it now. You know, so the rug glitch is still usable for very simple things like this. However, Swappa allows us to do absolutely anything with rug glitchable objects, uh, which you are not, so let's get rid of you. So that's what we are going to do next. So now that you've seen the tool that works for every object, let's look at the tools that are made specifically for the rug glitchable objects. Because less rules apply to rug glitchable objects, he was able to make a second set of tools which allows to move them easier and in groups without putting lamps on every single one. Now, I showed you the post and the lamp. The stairs is basically the post of rug glitchable objects. The stairs is the basic thing which you will use which allows you to move them. Now, when I was testing with this, I did something, and I should note, that removed this button. Notice it has a button and, a, and the trigger, just like the post. And I mentioned earlier about you know, it didn't seem to me what it mattered that you stored or deleted, but the author said never touch this button. Well, I did something and a button disappeared and I had stairs with no button and I had to reload an old save. So I'm still not sure exactly what caused that, but I will stress again, as I stressed before, do what the author says and don't store that button because you could end up with buttonless stairs and then you simply have stairs that reappear and disappear every time you walk over a spot in the ground. So... Now, normally it wouldn't be a problem because you could store the switch, but what happened is my stairs were underground, thus the switch was underground, I couldn't get to the switch and I had no button to reset it. So that's just a word of warning, I just want to put that out there before I continue on, and not to confuse anyone, but do do what the author says and don't store the button because if the switch happens to be underground, then you have nothing to get the switch back up with and yeah, it's an endless cycle. So, the stairs are the post of the rug glitchable objects. Now that we have the stairs, what do we do with it? Well, simple. We also have these other tools. We have two kinds of posts. This kind of post here calls in a floor. Well, let's put one right here. See, a little floor appeared. And the other kind calls a rug, which we'll get to. For now, let's just work with the floor and the stairs. We're gonna grab this floor, and this floor is made specifically to snap to these stairs. And it will always snap to those stairs, no matter what. Even if it has to clip through several things, it will always snap there. If we ever wanna get the floor back, you can always just grab this post and release it and the floor comes right back. So let's put this floor on our stairs. Now let's grab this. Now we don't have to group select this. We can simply grab the stairs and move the whole thing if we want. So let's move this. Well, let's get some of this stuff out of the way. We're done with non-RGO items, so let's move them out of the way. All right, so we have the stairs and the floor. Let's go ahead and put some stuff on here. We can put any number of things on here that will fit. And we can rug glitch items within this arrangement. And I'll show you that after this. For now, let's just simply arrange two things on here. Now, let's grab it by the stairs. Now, let's go ahead and hit our switch to make the stairs disappear, just like we did with the non-RGO items. And now we can place this anywhere we want. Okay? Now, what we want to do is the first first step, and this is important because this is easy to screw up if you do this wrong. Don't do anything with the stairs. The stairs are invisible. There's the button. There's the trigger. That's good. That's where we want to be. The next thing we do is let's move the floor. And we can simply, there's two ways. We can either store this post or we can just grab it and release it again. And that'll bring our floor back so we can reuse it. And now we can, we get the items floating there. Now we can just store this and I guess you do have to store the button. He actually didn't show that in his tutorial video. He placed the items and he just left the trigger and the button floating there so I uh, I mean I watched it several times and I never saw him do anything so that's what I did but do make sure if you store the button you store the trigger first okay and so now we have our items there like that. Let's go ahead and grab these back. So I just wanted to clarify that I did encounter a problem with storing the button but it was when I didn't store the trigger first. I have watched his tutorial video and I didn't see him do anything with the stairs. So, lacking clarification, that's how you do that. As you can see, it worked just fine. Let's go ahead and let's get another set of stairs. Let's make sure that there's no ghost stairs floating around. I'm pretty sure I deleted it right. 
Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and get us some stairs back. Make sure when you place these, because they clip, make sure you place them. It's very, it is imperative that trigger is visible. Okay, so we got that. Do we still have our floor? We do. We have our floor. Now, let's look at how we would want to rug glitch stuff on this. So now that we have our stairs, we have our trigger over there out of the way. We can move our stairs over here. Let's grab our floor. Snap it here. Now let's put our table. Now let's say that we want to put our bed closer to the table than you know game mechanics will allow. That is not a problem. Just as there's a post for a floor, there's also a post for a rug. Now notice there's several more posts. This one spawns in three floors, five floors, 10 floors, and likewise with the rugs. In case for whatever reason, you know, it, you could put 10 floors out here and arrange, you know, 500 objects on it if you want to. And that's why there is a separate set of tools for RGO items. If you, you can, if you wanted to, you could put an entirely furnished room in place, so. But we're just using the one times floor and the one times rug. Let's, so let's get this post for the rug and let's just drop it anywhere. And that gives us a rug. Just like that gives us the floor, it works exactly the same. We can pull this rug out. Oh, darn it. I guess I could have put it in a better spot. Here, let's put it in a better spot. And we can use it just like we would to rug glitch anything. So let's put it... Uh, let's put it right there. Now let's grab our bed. And we want to put the bed by the table. So let's, eh, who cares? Let's just put it like that. And we'll just rug glitch this in place. Like so. See, that works. Now, just go ahead and leave the rug there. Don't do anything with that. But we can call multiple rugs and do this as much as we want all over this. Now let's just do what we did before. Grab the whole assembly by the stairs. Again, don't have to group select. You just grab the stairs. Walk over the switch to disconnect the stairs and, you know, make them invisible. And now we can put this anywhere we want. Okay. Notice the stairs button reappeared. We're not going to do anything with that. We're just going to leave the stairs invisible, leave all that stuff just like that. We can store this or we can just grab and release it. It doesn't matter. So this time we'll store it. See, it makes the floor disappear. Now we still have that rug there. Let's go ahead and take care of the rug first. Let's do the stairs last. Because those stairs, you got to be careful with them. So now let's take care of that rug. It's the exact same as the floor. We can store this or just grab it and drop it. And the rug will disappear. Notice that the items aren't jumping or dropping like they would with a normal rug. That's the advantage of that. Now let's go ahead and get rid of these stairs. And the way I recommend to do that for my, you know, attempts and folly at doing so is to store or scrap, you know, whatever. Get rid of the trigger first and then the button. And we're good. So I hope I made that simple enough with non, I mean, sorry, with the regular rug glitchable objects. It's very simple. Just be careful, you know, what order you remove triggers and buttons in and whatnot. I think I illustrated that. So moving on down the list here. All these work the same. There's no need to show them. If I spawn in, okay, let's, let's do a, okay, this spawns in five floors. So when I place this, there's five floors. They're they're stacked on top of each other. I'd have to get stairs. See, they only snap to these stairs. So let me get stairs and I'll demonstrate it. Let's put some stairs down here. And now I can pull these floors out. And you see one by one, I can arrange them like so. And I don't know why you'd ever want to rug glitch, you know, or, you know, place anywhere so many items at once, but it's cool he gave us the tools to do that. And then, just like the post controls the one floor, this one post controls all five floors. Let's go ahead and do that again just to, you know, clarify everything. Let's go ahead and place our stairs because I know this is a little complicated. Make sure that the button's above ground. Always make sure your button's above ground. Do not want an invisible button. Oh, we just need to call it back. That's right. So let's grab and release our button. That calls our switch back. Now let's go ahead and... Let's do three floors. 
right? So we got us three floors here. Let's go ahead and get the stairs. Now that the switch is above ground, uh, I'm sorry, the trigger is above ground. Let's go ahead and move these stairs somewhere more convenient. And now let's place our three floors here, here, and here. And now let's get us some more objects. Let's go grab some more furniture. And let's get us a chair. Let's get a couch. Let's get us a table. I want to put a table in between these. So, no problem. Let's go back to the special menu. And let's grab us just one rug. That's all we need. One rug. And let's just put it there. Go ahead and grab our rug. And we'll just rug glitch this little coffee table right in between our furniture. Like so. I'm not sure. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, but we still have more room. Well, let's put some more stuff on here. Let's put a bed up here, too. Now we just, again, you know, you don't have to group select. Just grab it by the stairs. Move this, you know, anywhere, wherever you want. Let's remove the floors first, which is the green post. So there goes the floor. Let's go ahead and take care of the rug next, just, you know, to be on the safe side. and Notice nothing will drop when I remove this post. All the furniture stays there. Oops, I didn't make my stairs disappear. I don't think that matters. Let's go ahead and make the stairs disappear now. Let's hit it one more time. There we go. And then store that trigger and store this button. So it's a bit of a process. That's why I say sometimes the old-fashioned rug glitch can be better. You know, if you just want to move one item, if you just want to move this one door into a doorway, that's probably easier. But this allows so much more stuff to be done. All right, and now it's time to see how the tilt tool works. Now that we can place any object, rug glitchable or no, snappable or no, anywhere we want, let's move on to these more experimental prototype tools at the end of the swap a list. And you'll see a bunch of little laser beam things, and I'll explain what those are for, and this ruler. Now first, let's go over the process for how you would tilt an RGO item, okay? Now first, we can only tilt certain items. Unfortunately, we just can't tilt everything. And if you want to know ahead of time, these first two little laser beam trip wires that say RGO TT Mover, okay, TT stands for Tilt Tool. And so we got RGO Tilt Tool Mover C and F. It stands for Ceiling and Floor. And that's because, you know, this floor one, this laser beam will attach better to the bottom of things, although that may be on the ground there. I tend to have better luck with the C, which will attach towards the top of things like that. So there, it will go on this, so we can tilt this cabinet. We could not, for instance, tilt this chair or a couch or something, or probably that table that we couldn't snap a laser beam to. Yeah, it's simply, unfortunately, not everything, but updates are coming for this, and hopefully he can make this easier, because this is a real pain, <laughs> what I'm about to show you. So if you want to tilt that, the first thing we need is we need a floor to put it on, and we're going to tilt the floor. Just like we use the floor to place RGO items wherever we want, we're going to use a floor to tilt them. So first, let's spawn in the floor. First step to that is simply drop this ruler down, and that spawns in the floor. Well, you can't see it, but it's there. See, it's there. Let's get this at... Let's try here. There we go. It looks kind of glitchy, but it's there. And this, the floor will spawn in at whatever angle you drop this, oops, this yardstick at. So if I grab this yardstick, and if I put it here, uh, see, but first we need this floor flat because we need to be able to put the dresser or the cabinets or whatever on it. So let's go ahead and. Let's see if we can get this laying down flat. Ah. Let's see. Let's just store it and let's get a new one. There we go. Okay, we got a little glitchy floor there. 
let's put our dresser on it okay now as we've seen this floor will conform to whatever angle we put the yardstick at so let's put the yardstick at whoops an angle so let's grab it I can there we go now you can manipulate this yardstick outside of build mode I'm gonna to try to get lucky and do it here but you can manipulate it outside of build mode just like any other item let's see if we can get lucky here I'll show you let's go out of build mode and see we can grab this by holding the X button on PlayStation of course again you're on PlayStation now once we have it we can push L2 and R2 to rotate it you can tap L3 to toggle it between rotating it on the three different axes see so let's go ahead and let's say we want it at that angle that's the angle we want the floor at so let's go back into build mode and we simply need to reset the floor to that angle which simply means grabbing and releasing the yardstick so just grab it and release it there we go now that is the angle that these will appear at once we get our little laser beam tool here's the laser beams oops that I told you about so let's go ahead and grab I know that this one will attach to it we want to make sure the beam is pointing in a direction so that we can trigger it and it's snapped to the thing there we go now this won't trigger in workshop mode it's a safety he built in so we need to exit workshop mode now we just need to trigger this and there that is how you do that it's very it takes it takes some work it's very tricky but that's how that works let me show some of this again because I know that it can be somewhat confusing and it is difficult to pull off so let's just recap for RGO items oh and of course you can grab this off the floor and you can move it now it's gonna wobble and move really really weirdly Again, this is a workaround for PlayStation, you know. So let's go ahead and let's store this. And the clamped laser beam will store with it when we store it. Let's do this one more time just to make sure and see if there's anything I missed. Okay, so first we place a ruler that's nice and flat so we can get the floor out. There we go. Always keep track of your floor and your ruler, by the way you know make sure as I said earlier with that button and the trigger you know on the RGO items you want to make sure that you st you know if, when you get rid of this stuff if you do store it you know store it nice and neatly oh see there another ruler just appeared I had earlier there okay because that's what can happen okay so now we have only one floor and one ruler so let's grab us something I stored that cabinet so let's grab us something else that we know the laser beam will attach to let's grab something similar so I don't end up messing around with 55 different things let's grab something that's tall enough this will work now you want to put it on the floor and I may have skipped over this we want to make sure that when we grab the floor that comes with it see that's attached to the floor so that you know even when we move this yardstick and we tilt it as I showed and you know the floor moves the object is still connected to it in spirit, you know. Spooky action at a distance, you could say. There we go. Okay. So, again, you know, the floor is over here, but I did make sure that this was attached to the floor. So, it, it is in spirit attached to that floor. And that's where our little laser beam comes in. I'll just do this one more time. We want... This one, again, I seem to have the best luck with this one. Make sure we get our beam pointing in a way that... Oh, there's the beam that's in front. Okay. We need to exit workshop mode, trigger the beam, and that tilts. And, you know, again, now we can move this. It's a pretty rudimentary tool. But wait till you see how you have to do uh, the non-RGO items because this makes that look easy. This, this is easy compared to that. And yeah, this is rotating around some other, you know, vertex, some other axis. And I'm not sure what that is. But this is doable and you can use this if you ever have to tilt any RGO item for any reason. Or at least any R RGO item that this will attach to. And of course, once they store this... 
that will go away because that is technically still snapped to it. So let's get rid of this. Yeah, delete the floor by the ruler. That way it takes the ruler and the floor. And you don't have a ruler lost in the middle of your floor that suddenly pops out in the middle of nowhere like mine did earlier. <coughs> Excuse me. So, non-RGO items. The process is done a little bit differently. Now, I should say this will also work with RGO items, but this is kind of a pain in the butt and you wouldn't want to do this unless you have to. But this is how the tool works. Again, this is a workaround, you know. You just got to deal with those... PS4 limitations. So we want to tilt this wall. And, you know, the angle you want to tilt it at, again, is all dependent on that ruler. Now, we don't need the floor because we're just we're working with an, an non rgo item. So, you know, it's not going to be carried by a floor anyway. So the floor doesn't matter. So we're not using that. We're using a different tool. Here, we just go straight to the laser beam. Now, notice here's our RGO mover, RGO mover. And then here's the other two laser beams. I know they're not showing on my menu. That's annoying, but here they are. General tilt tool, C and F. C and F, just like the C and F for the RGO. And when we attach this to the wall, our yardstick will appear. Once this... I'm having some weirdness here. Well, there. Okay, now that gives us our yardstick. Notice this yardstick is floating. This yardstick is different than the one for the RGO. This one is like a build mode one. And that makes it a lot harder to place. Notice the green light under it that helps you locate it. If you lose it, and you know, or whatever, and it also differentiates it from the other yardstick. This one here with the green light is a build mode one. You can't place it anywhere as easily. I like this table here for doing angles. Although this table is low, it won't give you the best array of angles it's good for testing this out when you want to experiment because it's easier now notice that stays yeah that's the tricky part about this is we need to try to make this there stay okay you can bump it but generally it knocks it off you might have to grab another item in your hand out of build mode and kind of work with it. It's it's harder to move, and I'll show you some of that. So now all that we have to do is just trigger that, and it works. So in a way, this is easier. It's harder because of that thing. Now we need to trigger that, and I'm just going to go ahead and take guesswork out of the equation and get us a staircase to get up to it because I could try to jump up there all day and not hit that darn trigger. There we go. Exactly the same as the other one. Really the difference is you place the laser beam first, and then the yardstick is a little harder to work with because it's not, you know, like a normal settlement item. It's like a build mode version of the ruler. Let's store this, which also stores the laser beam. Let's put this aside, and let's grab us a different concrete wall. This is the one we want to tilt now. Now, this is the yardstick that was spawned by the old laser beam. So, you know, this no longer has anything it's attached to. So let's go ahead and store it. Now, let's, uh, yeah, let's go back and get our beam again. Try this one more time. This time I'll do it the other way. I'll, I'll, tr I'll move that ruler out of build mode. You'll see it's a, it moves a little different. So you want general tilt tool. C works pretty good. Why is that flickering like that? That's just making this annoying. There we go. Okay, I got it up there, but whatever. That's why I have the stairs. Sometimes you get lucky and you'll place this. You want to try to place it on the edge as far as you can. Sometimes it will just drop on its own. It didn't drop on its own right there. Now, if I bump into this, it'll most likely go flying. So, one thing you can do is go find something out of your inventory. Like, say... This... Now we can grab this and very carefully, yeah, this is a one silly workaround. I don't know how he figured all this out. It's pretty awesome that he did, though. There we go. Yes. Okay. So there, now we have that tilted. That's how you would do it outside of build mode. And now it's just a matter of tripping that trigger again. 
So let's go grab our stairs. Which are, there we go. I think this is an, a decent way to do it. Once you get up there to trigger that easier. And there we go. Now, one thing I do want to note is you can still snap stuff to this, but it's not going to snap like you think it was. If you try to snap stuff to this, it's going to snap to the wall's original, like, actual position in the world. Let me show you. Get a wall. See, you can snap, but see, it snaps to its original position. I don't think this tilt works in any way with groups, and I've tested everything I could with this mod, and I've watched his tutorial several times, and I don't recall him saying anything about grouping, and I don't see how you could. So it looks like, you know, unlike when you're moving objects and you can use the lamps, it looks like this is only one thing at a time. I'm not going to say right now, because I haven't even thought to try the lamps in conjunction with this, but it looks like this is basically one thing at a time. So. There you go, that's how this works. The tilt is experimental and just for now, and I'm sure he will come out with a better workaround soon. Again, don't forget, the S in Swappa stands for stupid. <laughs> because this was the best he could come up with. So I look forward to seeing how he can improve this. Guys, I hope you found this guide helpful. It was a pleasure making this for you, even though this has been a lot of work. And boy, you guys should see all the edits I had to do to make this, you know, into one thing. So I hope that everything did make sense for you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content, because I'm always trying to come up with good ways to help and give tips to people and share Fallout experiences, guys. It's been fun. My name is Dark Dally, and I will see you all next time.